But we uh, think uh, the, the, the situation for dialogue is excellent for us here. It's because of the principle of the folklore uh, movement, uh, the principle of love. Uh, taken the, from the message of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, uh, hit the love as he uh, uh, presented it, how you are to love each other as Christians and love your fellow man. Um, that is an idea that we embrace totally, and uh, I think anybody, whether they belong to one religion or the other, doesn't matter. We can embrace that principle uh, completely. Um, and so first, firstly, I see the situation being made uh, very relaxed and easy for us uh, to have discussion because your principle is, touches all human souls. Um, um, and secondly, what I see here is the, the people uh, that have gathered here from the different parts of the world, not just the Muslims, but the non-Muslims as well, um, they come with uh, and a strong interest and already I think they have identified with the principle of love, loving uh, your fellow man as you love yourself, uh, sharing, uh, mutual love. I think all of the people that I've heard from uh, while, while being here observing, um, they have uh, already identified uh, with that principle or they have already decided they would like to embrace it, <laughs> as I have, you know. Um, so I think um, um, our imams, we have uh, many imams from U.S. here, uh, leaders in the religion. Um, and we have some others who are not imams, but they are leaders. They are business people, educators, uh, teachers, and they are here. And uh, this gives us an opportunity to, um, I would say, uh, feed our souls and our minds uh, without uh, fearing that uh, some germs, uh, bad bacteria is going in or something, you know. <laughs> so they are relaxed too. I've, I've met them. They all seem to be very relaxed. And I know we are going back home with a stronger sp sense of our own spirituality because of our meeting each other. And I would imagine that some of the members of the folklore are, um, are feeling the same. That's from uh, seeing us express ourselves, hearing how we express ourselves, from seeing the common spirituality that we have. We do have a common spirituality with you all. Um, I think uh, some of your members, too, uh, will go back home with more power inside. <laughs> I know I'm going back with more power inside here. When you spoke the other morning, you said that you want to represent not only black Muslims, but Muslims in general. Can you tell me more about how you see your role? Yes, I've never been comfortable um, when I belonged to the, uh, what was called the Black Muslims in the Nation of Islam and, and under uh, Elijah Muhammad, my father, who passed in 1975, uh, and Farrakhan, you know, Minister Farrakhan of America. I was never comfortable with that, that idea. Even as a young boy, I was not comfortable with that idea. Not that I was rejecting my father. I didn't reject my father, and I didn't reject that the community. But I just uh, didn't feel comfortable with certain things that they were believing in, that, that I, that I was in, uh, expected to believe, you know. I didn't feel very comfortable with that. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm free for the first time to be the man, to be the person I wanted to be even as a child. And that is a person that, uh, that follows uh, what my mother's instruction, um, be truthful, <laughs> be truthful, uh, be fair, be just, don't be wrong by anybody. Don't do wrong to anybody. So what she ta taught me, <clears throat> uh, now I can live it uh, freely. Um, so when I represent Muslims, I want to make it clear that I'm not representing black Muslims. I'm representing all Muslims, uh, black and the whites and all in America. Uh, and uh, I believe most of the ethnic groups in America, majority of them, some among them, they have differences with me. Uh, some of, and it's mostly from their leaders. I got a percentage of their leaders with me, but uh, I got a big percentage of their leaders that differ with me. Uh, they think I'm too nice, that I'm naive, you know, I'm going to get myself in trouble and misrepresent Islam. <laughs> but uh, I'm convinced I'm on the right track. <laughs> um, uh, the majority of their people that I meet, uh, they, are, they are feeling differently. 
they are proud of me and they're cheering me on and they ask me to represent them. When you addressed the meeting the other morning, we heard how the economic situation of your people is so close to your heart. Can you tell me your hopes and plans for this? Yes, our situation, our financial situation is, uh, I would say, uh, um, what you would uh, generally see. We are typical African-American community people, and uh, the typical African-American community people, the, they are solely dependent on for, for uh, the uh, uh, business life of their neighborhoods. They are totally dependent upon outsiders, non-residents. Non and this is something that we carry, the leaders particularly, we carry that on our hearts as a burden. And we've tried different things. We've tried different things to um, bring about change. Uh, and, but only a little change has been made. <clears throat> and uh, soon the effort is lost, the effort is f forgotten. Uh, we think we have an effort now that won't ever be lost. We think it will stay with us for generations and generations. And it's a, community, it's a community effort to empower the poor financially by all of us getting together and putting our small monies together and, and um, working as, as, as one mind, one mind, to, to better the financial state of our, our neighborhoods. Our neighborhood, eventually we hope that this um, idea will not just be in the hands of Muslims, African-American Muslims, but will be in the hands of our Christian neighbors too, who are, who are in the majority, who are in the great majority. Um, so this is, uh, to me, is a vision for the future of African-American neighborhoods. Uh, we, ho we hope one day to have the government uh, thank God for us that we have solved a lot of problems. We think uh, economic improvement in the neighborhood will also reduce crime considerably. Uh, and we think it also uh, will uh, take a lot of the, the health burden problems off of the uh, city uh, and the state and the federal government, you know. Um, so we, th we think um, um, by going and going in obedience to God to better our financial life with a rational plan that's very rational and sound that we can uh, eventually free up our religious community so that we can have schools, better schools, and better homes for our families. At this meeting, there are Muslims from many different backgrounds, different countries, and different currents in Islam. Has there been a dialogue between the different groups? Yes. We are now asking for that. And I think uh, we are hearing more imams from the different uh, ethnic groups. Uh, now asking for that. We realize now that uh, we have to find some way uh, to, f to discover uh, our unity <laughs> because we are so divided by different, think different uh, kinds of thinking, you know. Uh, the person from the Pakistani community may be closer to our thinking uh, than perhaps uh, a person from some parts of Africa even, you know. It's not the color anymore, it's the way they think. Um, and uh, we have to, uh, somehow, we're going to have to find uh, like minds um, that will permit people of different ethnic groups, different colors, to come together for the good future of the Muslim world and the human world. Do you have any particular reflections along these lines as this meeting comes to a close? Well, this is truly an international conference. <laughs> There's no place here for uh, uh, narrow, narrow thoughts and narrow-minded people, you know. And uh, that's, to me, that's a uh, spiritual uh, atmosphere that's close to what I expect in heaven if I get there, and I hope to get there. Um, um, I do have to. I think um, uh, the conference have given us a chance to meet Muslims that we perhaps never would have met. Uh, imams, business people, uh, that we never would have met, uh, who think very much like we think. Uh, they're attracted to, to come here because they are, dis they are positioned in their minds and hearts very much like we are. Um, um, and uh, also non-Muslims, giving us a chance to meet non-Muslims, um, that uh, uh, give us an opportunity to have new friendships and very important friendships because these are no ordinary people that we're meeting here. 
they represent the higher higher class of people in the world you know the, the more refined mentally and also uh, spiritually and this gives us an opportunity to have more power in the world because I think <coughs> when good people get together then good people have more power in the world and I see this as a growing thing that will never stop it's not going to stop uh, it started uh, with uh, Kiara Lubick uh, may God uh, keep her always uh, in good health and, and, and good spirit uh, for us, not just for you, but for us too. Um, um, it started with her, um, uh, well, uh, when she says when she was only 23 years old, she had already taken on responsibility uh, for the group. And that's a long time ago. I, I don't want to tell her age because she looks much younger than what she is. But that's, um, that, that was when I was a little baby, I guess. <laughs> I was a baby, I believe, at that time, or at least uh, around eight or nine years old, maybe. Maybe I was that old. Um, <clears throat> so it's, n it's, it's not going to stop. It's going to grow. It's been growing ever since she be took on that responsibility. It has been growing. It's hard to count your people. Yes, because I've told people about you, and I don't know. I think some of them have become folklore people. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, Yes, so it's something that's not going to stop. It's going to continue to grow. And uh, it's, it's not only um, uh, coming from uh, the folklore movement either. There are other people with very similar kind of uh, thinking and hopes for our future. And faith, that's what it is, it's a big faith. We have a big faith in the future of people if they'll just embrace the right ideas and follow God, believe in God, and, 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 and love one another. Um, so that. That, ho that belief in that future is shared by so many people. Um, sometimes I frighten myself with my own beliefs. I look at my own beliefs and, and it kind of makes me shiver a little bit sometimes. And I say, well, am I, uh, am, am I dreaming or am I standing up off the earth? Am I in suspended in space or what, you know? Um, but as I begin to reason with it and reason with this world, I say, oh no. This is, this is true, this is the real reality, and uh, what's frightening me is not the truth, it's not the real reality. Um, we hear so much uh, about uh, uh, the uh, inhuman side of uh, the human creation uh, because of the media um, uh, presenting the news, and that's the news we expect. We want to we wanna know who died, who got killed, who's hurt, you know, who's sick. Uh, who who put on the best show, you know. These are the kind of things we want to hear about, so the media has to serve us. They give us these things. But we miss the people like you, the folklore people, what you're all about. Uh, so I imagine that this this movement or forces uh, that we identify in this movement are growing all around the world. Imam WD, I know that when you arrived here in Rome you had a personal conversation with Chiara. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with her? From the first time I got acquainted with her, even before I read the book, her, the book on her history, her life, uh, I was convinced that she was a person uh, that God had given us. Uh, she's a gift from God to us to help this world heal itself and come together so we can survive because we can't survive if we're going to be uh, separate from each other and creating our own se destruction for ourselves in our separate quarters of the world. That can't ha happen anymore. You can't have one part of the world uh, be poisoned or be corrupt or be hurt seriously and the rest of the world not affected by it. The world has become conscious now uh, all over, everywhere, uh, because of the great advancement of the media and etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, um, I see her as a person that God has created himself. She's not even the creation of the Catholic Church, in my opinion. She's the creation of God, you know. God has made her what she is. And um, uh, uh, God has chosen her for the work that she's doing. And I believe that uh, from the very beginning, I believe that my meeting her and just greeting her and letting her know that I believe in her was an obligation on me that I had to make it clear to her that I know her, I do believe I know her, and I believe in her. Um, uh, we can be separated from, from now on. I never have to see her again. But she has touched my life and uh, she has uh, given me something for my own expressions now. 
that's going to come out. It's going to be some of Ke some of uh, Kiara Lubick coming out of Imam Dabini Muhammad too, you see. And I'm sure that uh, she's praying for me. And we are together, whether we are physically together in one place or not. Wherever we are in the world, we are together. And I think uh, uh, that the benefit of my meeting her um, it benefits my associates that I talk with, that I sit down and talk with, who also share res this responsibility that I have to present Islam in the right way. Uh, all of them are benefiting because of my meeting with Kian Lubick, and um, I hope that uh, my children to come, my grandchildren, their children, will, will know Kian Lubick and love her like I do. The Legacy of Iman W.D. Muhammad. In Markham, Illinois, near Chicago, on September 9th, Imam Wallace Dean Muhammad unexpectedly died at the age of 74. The spiritual leader of several million African American Muslims, Imam Muhammad always chose the way of tolerance working to build bridges between African-American Muslims and those coming from the Middle East and Asia, and between Muslims and faithful of other religions. In 1999, he had been nominated as one of the international presidents of the World Conference on Religions and Peace. A deep spiritual friendship bound him to Kiata ever since the event at the Malcolm Shabazz Mosque of Harlem in New York on May 18, 1997, when Kiata told her experience of faith to an attentive and engaged audience of 3,000 people. From the first time I got acquainted with her, I was convinced that she was a person uh, that God had given us. Uh, she's a gift from God. My meeting her it benefits my associates who also share this responsibility that I have to present Islam in the right way. And um, I hope that uh, my children to come, my grandchildren, their children, will, will know Kiara Lubick and love her like I do. We met as brothers and sisters would, true brothers and sisters who had long awaited this moment. The one who bound us together and made us in a certain way one was that God in whom we all believe and we all love. Given their profound relationship, Kiara and Imam Muhammad made a pact of mutual love during the event in Harlem, deciding to work tirelessly for peace and unity. Imam Muhammad confirmed with joy, the pact is made forever, he said. May God be my witness, you are my sister, I am your friend, and I will always help you. Among the various trips to Rome to participate in the symposiums of the Focolari with the Muslim Friends, we especially remember that of October 1999. The group of 90 Muslims from the U.S. had taken part in the large interreligious gathering in St. Peter's Square, hosted by John Paul II. Imam Mohammed had been chosen to give a message on behalf of the Muslim world. He personally greeted the Pope and asked him to bless his and Kiara's work for dialogue. In 2000, in Washington, D.C., before an audience of 6,000 Muslims and Christians, Kiara concluded her talk with encouraging and prophetic words. May our mutual love serve to give life to a new world, renewed by love a world in which all people recognize one another as brothers and sisters. Imam Muhammad promptly responded. I respond to her and I see her as a leader for all of us. For all of us, I mean that. I see her as a leader for all of us. Following that convention, Kiara and Imam Muhammad drew up a program called Encounters in the Spirit of Universal Brotherhood that has since continued in mosques and in various Focolari locations. On each occasion, they deepen an aspect of the collective spirituality from the Christian and Muslim point of view and follow with experiences of life. A few days before dying, 
Imam Mohammed had met with the two co-directors for the Zone of Chicago and had asked to be updated on the Focolari's recent General Assembly, stating that he couldn't wait for the chance to meet Emos and Giancarlo. He emphasized his great desire, now that Chiara was in heaven, that our dialogue not stop, but that it may continue always more.